Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Colbath. My name is Julie Colbath, and I am the coordinator of civic engagement in the Office of Student Life here at U of M Dearborn. I want to say thanks so much to Tyler, who filled in for me on the last Cooking with Colbath. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, please do, right? It's in the playlist on our YouTube page. Um, Tyler made a really great mug muffin which is a super cool, super fast, super easy way to get to breakfast in the morning. I would recommend you try it. If you have any like adaptations, right, or if you found some good combinations, please feel free to put it in the comments on that video, right? It's always good to hear what other people are doing um, and exchange ideas. So today I was trying to find things that I have in my fridge and a recipe to kind of um, Fuse some of the things that I have at home right now. Um, and I saw this recipe for this six ingredient meatball and rice skillet, and it sounded like it'll be good. Um, doesn't take a lot of effort, which is always appreciated. Um, and again, it says it's six ingredients. Sometimes I feel like that's not always fully true, right? Like, because they don't always count like oil and salt and pepper but those are hopefully things that you already have in your pantry already. So you'll need some oil, calls for olive oil. I have avocado oil. You could use vegetable oil, that's fine too. Um, it calls for half of an onion chopped. I already have this in my fridge, so I'm just gonna use it up. Um, we've gone over chopping onions plenty of times, so if you need a refresher, please see, um, one of the videos further back. It calls for a cup of, you can't really see that very well, long grain white rice. If you were to use brown rice, you'd probably have to adjust the cooking time. Brown rice takes a lot longer to cook than white rice. Um, it calls for two cups of chicken broth, but if you have beef broth or um, vegetable broth, any sort of broth will work. It calls for a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. So normally I've only really seen these in like 10 ounce cans. Um, so I've used one and a half cans, right? So it's, I'm at about like 15-ish ounces, but I'm not too concerned about it. Um, the recipe which I found, um, which I will adapt for the recipe card, calls for these taco seasoned um, meatballs. Those are meatballs that are already cooked. They're, are, they're in the refrigerated section, that brand, which I have never utilized before. So I have just like oops, frozen turkey meatballs. You could use beef meatballs, um, pork meatballs, a mixture um, of whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna test it out with using the equivalent of frozen meatballs. I did like thaw these for a little bit of time before um, I'm gonna make this. We'll see if it if then I need more time or if they cook in the same amount of time. These meatballs are pretty small. They're already cooked, but they were frozen. Um, if you have leftover meatballs from when we made meatball subs a few episodes back, you could use those. Um, and so since it calls for taco seasoned ones. I'm gonna add some taco seasoning to um, the skillet and we'll see how that goes, um, right? Sometimes flexibility is <laughs> required in cooking, um, but if you were you know, making your own meatballs, you could make taco seasoned meatballs. I think this would be honestly like fine without adding the taco seasoning. I'll let you know when I try it to see, right? Like if you, can get away with it, but I think especially with the tomatoes with the diced um, chilies and the onion and the cheese, you might not need the taco seasoning anyway. Um, and then it calls for pepper and salt to taste, right? So add that as you would like, and then a cup of shredded Mexican blend cheese. If you just have cheddar, great, Colby Jack, anything will work. Um, Cool, so it's a one skillet meal, which I appreciate. Um, you don't have to cook the rice separately. It's all gonna cook in one 
steal it. So we are going to get started. I'm going to turn on um, my heat. Reorient you a little bit. All right, so I have it on like a, a medium. So I'm going to use this large skillet. You'll want something that you have a lid for, um, right? So that you can have all of this, all of the ingredients minus the cheese in it, and you'll be able to, right? When you cook rice, normally you put a lid on it, and because you want to keep that moisture in so that the rice can absorb um, the liquid. So we're gonna make sure that we have a lid, which I need to grab. Hold on. I'm gonna add oil. It calls for two teaspoons. If you wanna measure it out, feel free. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, we'll just be adding our onion um, and cooking the onion until it's soft, which should hopefully take about three or four minutes. Um, so a lot of this will probably be downtime. So again, it'll seem like no time to you, but it'll be cooking for 18 to 20 minutes or until the rice is cooked through. So I added oil. I'm gonna add my onion. I feel like half an onion is sort of subjective, right? Like we talked about, there are varying sizes of onions. Um, I love onions, so this is probably a little bit more than you might need, but I like the crunch and the flavor. Um, so we are going to let those soften, which again will take about three to four minutes. Um, so like I mentioned, I had bought two of these 10 ounce, um, tomatoes with diced chilies. I had measured out about one and a half cans, right, to get to the 14 ounces. And then I have put the rest of it in a little bowl, right? And I can add this to tacos. I could put it in my eggs in the morning, right? I could throw it in a chili. There's lots of things that you can do. You could also freeze this if you don't have an immediate need for it. Sometimes I really wish, and I, I know not everyone's a fan of onions, right? So if you don't like onions, you can skip this step. If you like peppers, you could saute peppers instead. Um, but I really wish sometimes that you could like send smells through a video, right? I love the smell of onion sauteing. Brings me a lot of joy. Um, if you wanted to make this vegetarian, you would obviously want to use uh, vegetable broth. Um, and then you could substitute, so the recipe called for like 12 ounce, the 12 ounce package of meatballs. Um, you could put a can of black beans, you could split like black beans and corn, right? If you don't love onions, you could add half a cup or maybe like half a can of corn. That would probably be about, um, half of an onion um, or you know there are vegetarian meatballs that you can make or buy if you I think it would also be good right with like cubed tofu or seitan or any of the meat alternatives um, and then if you wanted to make this vegan you just wouldn't put the cheese on it you'd have to have a different meat alternative right but if you wanted it to be dairy free just substitute the cheese for a dairy free alternative if you enjoy them or just don't add cheese at all all right so our onions are starting to soften um i didn't set a timer because 
I can sort of see that they're starting to get a little bit translucent and some of them are starting to brown a little bit. So we're gonna add the rice. The rice is not cooked. So we're gonna add the rice and cook it for about a minute or two to toast the rice, which hopefully will give it, you know, a little bit of a nutty-ish flavor or right, like just add a little bit to the flavor profile. So I'm gonna set a timer for this for a minute because I don't want to forget and then the rice starts to burn. Um, so you wanna just make sure that you don't cook it for too long, right? This step probably isn't like super necessary if you don't want to do it or you're a little bit scared, but as long as you're kind of mixing it around, um, if you make sure that your pan is well oiled, if it needs to be, Realizing I didn't necessarily need to add oil to this one because it's a non-stick. Um, you can just scoot the rice around so nothing gets too, too toasted um, or too dark. But again, it'll just add a little bit of a different, different depth to the flavor. Alright, timer's about to go off. Okay. So add chicken broth to pan and stir well. So again, this is two cups of chicken broth. I had like a carton that had four cups, so I put the other two cups in my fridge to use at another time. We're just gonna stir it around to get it sort of mixed. Be careful if your pan's too hot and you add it too quickly, you might get some steam coming back at you. Um, and then we're going to add the tomatoes. Again, these are diced tomatoes with red chilies. Add the meatballs to the pan and bring to a simmer. So I'm gonna add the meatballs. So I had a two pound bag of meatballs. So I pulled out um, like a three quarters of a pound because the recipe originally, the package that it calls for is 12 ounces. So that's in there. We're gonna mix it around. I'm going to add my taco seasoning now. Um, so normally for a pound of meat, when you add taco seasoning, you add a quarter of a cup. Um, I think that's what it said on here. So let's look quick. Yeah, normally for a taco meat. You have a pound of meat to a quarter cup of seasoning and two thirds cup of water. And then, so a quarter cup is four tablespoons. So I'm just gonna add one tablespoon, right? So that's just like a quarter of a quarter. Um, just to see how it is, right? I can always add more later, but I don't want to get too crazy at first. Um, I think this will just help provide some of the like taco seasoning flavor that it was originally looking for. But again, I think this would be completely good without adding that taco seasoning, right? Because it would sort of just be like any sort of meat, rice, tomato, onion, um, just sort of like a taco skillet. All right, so we're going to bring it to a simmer, and then we're gonna cover it and cook it for 18 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna, it's starting to bubble a little bit. I think you can probably see it barely <laughs> in, um, in the video. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything seems reasonably like distributed equally. Um, and now I'm just going to, Put my lid on 
and I'm going to turn it down right when something right when you're making rice you normally have it at a simmer you don't want it to be like boiling so you want to make sure the heat is low I have it on low heat and it's covered. We're going to set a timer for 18 minutes. Um, and then we'll check it between 18 and 20 minutes and we'll see if the rice is cooked through. Um, we'll also make sure that the meatballs feel warm, right? If they don't, um, then we'll just cook it a little bit longer. Um, or we could always take the meatballs out, stir fry them really quick to get them to temperature. Um, they're already cooked, right? So if you are using your own meatballs that you've made, you likely will want to cook them first before you add them into the skillet, right? The As it's simmering, it'll get like a lot of good flavors, right? Like as if you were simmering your meatballs in, um, in like a pasta sauce, right? In a more traditional sense of meatballs. Um, but I don't think that this would be enough time and heat to potentially like cook them thoroughly. So make sure that your meatballs are already cooked. All right. Again, this will seem like no time to you, but it will be 18 to 20 minutes right here. So I'll see you in just a few seconds. All right, friends, we are back. At the 18 minute mark, I tried it and the rice was still too crunchy. Um, cooking times, like we sort of talked about, can be very variable, right? Depending on what kind of pan you're using, what kind of heat source you have, how high that heat source is. Um, so I set it for another five minutes and it was still a little bit too, rice was a little bit too crunchy for my tastes so i set it for another five minutes so i added an extra 10 minutes i for y'all at the 18 to 20 minute mark just test it yourself to see what um the rice is like if it's too crunchy keep cooking it if it's fine turn it off um so it's at a good spot now i'm gonna turn off the meatballs were cooked through so I think if you add frozen meatballs like directly from the freezer, it should be fine. Um, Cause mine sat in the fridge for maybe like an hour or two, which isn't actually that much time. Um, so what we're gonna do now, is we needed a cup of cheese. This is Colby and Monterey Jack. If you have like the Mexican blend, that's fine. You know, whatever cheese you prefer. So this is a cup, whoops. And we're just gonna add it on top. And I think like I established in my first Cooking with Colbeth episode, I love cheese. So if you want to add more, feel free to do so. I think this would also be good, right? Topped with like some sour cream, um, avocado, some extra salsa if you want. Um, I did end up adding another tablespoon of taco seasoning. So I would recommend if you're not using the like taco season meatballs so we add that we put that back on and we're gonna let it sit for five minutes um until it's melted so it doesn't have to wait for five minutes if you don't want um if it melts faster if you don't use the taco seasoned meatballs and you want that like taco seasoning flavor anywhere from one to two tablespoons of seasoning would be good um which is probably about um, half of a packet. Um, I recognize that a lot of the times people don't have spices in bulk like this. I like to buy, I have a Sam's Club membership at the moment, right? Um, because they were doing like, if you pay the $45 membership fee, you get a $45 gift card. So if you are interested, I don't know if that's still going on, but a good way if you are looking to buy in bulk um these spices are only like five dollars which i feel like this is a lot of taco packets um so you can add that or yeah sprinkle some of the packet in but it definitely doesn't necessarily need it if you don't want it in there um another thing if you wanted to melt this quicker 
if your pan is oven safe, um, you can pop it in your oven under the broiler for a few minutes. Um, it might get a little bit crispy, which sometimes that's nice. Um, but make sure that your pan is oven safe because you don't want to get like melt any pans or, you know, get toxins in your food or whatever. Um, cool. Well, I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you might try it. Again, I really think this would be good even like with the meatballs to add black beans or pinto beans um, or corn. I like a lot of different textures in the food that I'm eating, so I think those would be appreciated. Textures and flavors. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, if you have any suggestions on things we should be making, as always, feel free to comment on the videos or reach out to our office. Um, the pantry is still open um, for the moment at Wednesday, on Wednesdays from noon to four and Thursdays from two to six um, by appointment only. So make sure that you email UM Dearborn Pantry to set up an appointment if you're interested. We are open to uh, UM Dearborn students. Um, yeah, if you make this, let me know. Um, one thing I did want to note is that if your rice is like almost there, when you turn it off, right, you're still cooking it while it's covered while you're melting the cheese. So if it's almost there, you can feel free to turn it off, add your cheese, um, put the lid back on, and it'll continue to cook for a few minutes. Um, we will be doing a crossover with one of our um, other programs called Real Talk Friday. So look at, out for that soon. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining. Hope to see you again soon.